Hello and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to cover something so central to chemistry that I would venture to guess that almost everyone watching this, uh, when you think of the word chemistry, is going to associate chemistry with a chemical reaction. That's just what, that's what it is. I mean, when you talk about chemistry, you talk about combining elements to form new substances in a chemical reaction. So this is our first section. We've finally built up the skills where we can intelligently talk about a chemical reaction and what it is and how we write it down, how we represent it. And we're also going to talk about what we call balancing a chemical reaction, which is going to be a huge part of any chemistry class and definitely a huge part of your exam. So definitely pay attention. Everything you've learned up till this point is going to be important to know to conquer this. So what is a chemical reaction? Obviously, you start with some things, you put them together, uh, you know, and then they react, so they reorganize on some atomic level, and then you get some stuff out. And we all know that what you get out might look completely different than what you put in. You might take hydrogen from the air, right, which is a flammable gas. You might burn it with oxygen, which is a, you know, invisible gas. Two things that float around in the air, right? You make water, which is heavy, liquid, and looks nothing like a gas, right? Well, of course, you can heat it up and make water vapor, but I mean, the, the net result of that reaction is going to produce water, which is totally different substance than the things that went into making the water. And that's why we have such an incredible variety of things around us, from plastic here, you know, that's made of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, uh, you know, to everything else that we have as well. So, how do we write down a chemical reaction? Let me write down a very, very simple one so that we can talk about it without getting wrapped up and in, in being too intimidated by it. If you take carbon, right, and you add to it oxygen, then what you will get is carbon dioxide, or what you can get is carbon dioxide. So this is basically a chemical reaction. You write it down almost like an equation. You have the things on the left that are added together, so to speak. You put a plus sign there. That means that we're taking these two things and we're mixing them together and we're allowing them to react. And then on the right-hand side, we have an arrow here. This, this indicates the direction that this reaction proceeds. It means that they come together and they form a product. Then you write it all together in terms of your molecular formulas that we've been talking about. In this case, it's carbon dioxide. All right. Now, you might look at this and say, well, why did he put O2 here? Why didn't he just put oxygen here? And that's because, if you remember, we talked about these diatomic molecules in the volume one of Chemistry Tutor. Some gases just like to exist in paired, uh, bonded pairs. And what they're called diatomic it means two, two of them stuck together. Uh, oxygen is like that. Hydrogen is like that. There's a number of others that I've listed for you in the past. You're going to have to remember them because when you write your chemical reaction, you can't just write C plus O because you can't buy a bottle of oxygen that just has single oxygen atoms floating around. It just doesn't exist. Oxygen always pairs up by, you know, in pairs of two to form O2 gas or if it's hydrogen H2 gas. There's, there's a few others out there. So that's why it's C plus O2 yields. This is what you say. You don't usually say it equals. You say that it yields. It means they come together and it yields something new, carbon dioxide. Now, let's talk a little bit about terms. The stuff on the left-hand side of the arrow is called the reactants. That means the stuff that you mix together in the, begin to be in the beginning. The stuff that you get on the right-hand side is the products. Now, I've intentionally chosen a very simple reaction that we are going to all come to terms with. I mean, we can all, we've all burned firewood. Firewood has carbon in it. Burns with the oxygen. That's what burning is. Burning is just putting things together with oxygen. Heat also comes out of it. But basically, you're combining with oxygen. You get carbon dioxide. That's what we do when we burn things. Very, something you've had experience with over and over again. So this is the reactants, this is the product. You might have 15 reactants on the left. You might have 15 things, you know, mixing together. On the right, you might form multiple products. You might have CO2 plus something else, plus something else, plus something else, right? So I'm just creating a, a simple uh, guy here. Now, the other thing I wanna make sure you understand, and this is so very important, is that when we write this reaction, um, in front of these, in front of these uh, guys here, so this is an atom of carbon, this is a molecule of oxygen, this is a molecule of carbon dioxide, there are no numbers in front of here. So it's just like a, an equation. If there's no number, there's an implied one here. There's an implied one here. There is an implied number one here. What this means is that 
since this is already a balanced reaction, we'll talk about what balanced means in a second. There's one, what it means is that the way in which this reaction proceeds, it means that one mole of carbon, because there's an implied one out here, one mole of carbon, combines with one mole of this oxygen O2 gas, because there's an implied one here, and it yields one mole of CO2 gas. That's why the numbers in, in front that we're gonna be talking more about here in a minute are so very important. It's telling you the ratio that these things combine and the ratio that they form the products. One mole of carbon plus, um, plus one mole of oxygen gas yields one mole of carbon dioxide. These little numbers here that are, in this case, they're implied ones, but you could have other numbers out there you'll see in a moment. Those are what we call the stoichiometric coefficients. Stoichiometry is a word that you throw around in chemistry and it scares a lot of students because stoichiometry, oh, it's so difficult. Stoichiometry is just a fancy word that means we're gonna use the chemical reaction and the numbers that exist in front of all the, the reactants and the products on the left and the right hand side to calculate stuff. That's literally what it means. Stoichiometry, stoichiometric, anything you see like that just means the coefficients in front. We're gonna use those coefficients to calculate things. So in this section, we're going to learn how to write down reactions. We're going to learn how to balance reactions. We're going to learn how to choose these coefficients differently. You'll see in a moment how we do it. And in subsequent sections, we're going to use those coefficients to calculate stuff like how many grams of carbon dioxide will be formed if we burn two grams of oxygen with three grams of carbon. And we'll be able to actually get down to the point where in the lab, you could take three grams of carbon, two grams of oxygen, mix it up, burn it. Okay, we should get four grams of carbon dioxide or whatever we calculate. And we'll be able to measure that. So we'll be able to predict what we're going to get. Not only the compound, but how much of the compound. And that all comes in the genesis of what we're going to talk about now. Before we can get to that point, we have to talk about the reactions and how to balance them. So I've told you to trust me on faith that there's an implied one here. This reaction is already balanced. What I mean by balanced is the number of carbon atoms on the left-hand side is equal to the number of carbon atoms on the right-hand side because I have a one here. Uh, there's no subscript, in other words. There's no subscript here. This is an implied one. This is an implied one. So basically, you can think about it as, okay, you know, an atom of carbon, an atom of carbon. The carbons have been balanced. That means on the left-hand side, the right-hand side, they have to be the same. You're not going to, like, create new carbon. You should have figured this out by now. You can't just create an element. You just can't create gold. I mean, if we could just create gold, then we'd all be rich, right? You can't just like take aluminum and transform it into zinc. You just can't. It doesn't work like that, at least not with chemistry. So only thing you can do is take the stuff that you start with and rearrange it into new materials on the back end. But ultimately, the amount of the materials that you started with individually have always got to be equal to the amount of materials that you end up at the end of the day. That's called the law of conservation of mass. And it's universally true. So if I have basically one, one atom of carbon, for every time this little reaction proceeds, I really need to have one atom of carbon in the product somewhere. It might be tied up in a compound somewhere, but I have to see that. Here I have two atoms of oxygen. There's an implied coefficient of one, so it's one times two. I have two atoms of oxygen. Over here I have also have two atoms of oxygen. This one is out here, so one times two is two. So. On the left-hand side, I have X number of atoms of carbon. On the right-hand side, I have X number of atoms of carbon. I'm balanced. On the left-hand side, I have X number of atoms of oxygen. On the right-hand side, I have X number of atoms of oxygen. I'm balanced. So this reaction is already balanced. This is exactly how it proceeds. One mole of carbon plus one mole of oxygen yields one mole of carbon dioxide. It's balanced, all right? That's what we mean by balancing. Now, in just a few moments, I'm gonna write some reactions down that are not balanced. And your job as the student is going to be to balance the reaction. And that's really what this whole section is about. How do you do that? How do you balance these reactions? The goal, when you see a reaction and your teacher or your test says balance it, the goal is choose these coefficients such that the number of atoms of carbon or oxygen, whatever you have on the left, is going to be the same as the number of atoms of everything you have on the right because that's law of conservation of mass. That has to be obeyed always. So you're free to choose these stoichiometric coefficients uh, you know, to basically pull that off. And so that's what we're going to basically be doing. Now before we get to that point, I also want to tell you that we can, in, in the terms of how do we write these reactions down, we, we also use uh, these chemical reactions to, to keep track of the state. So carbon is a solid, so we can put an S here, right? 
Oxygen is a gas, so we could put a G here. And carbon dioxide is also a gas, so we can put a G here. So a lot of times you will see things like this. And this tells you carbon in solid form, oxygen in gas form, carbon dioxide in gas form. And so you'll see that a lot. Don't get scared by that. It's just telling you what the state of, of matter is. And the legal things that you can write in there are as follows. You can write S for solid, right? You can write G for gas, so we've already done those. Okay, you can write, you might have guessed, L for liquid. These are all pretty things that you would think. I mean, if you're dealing with liquid, you'd put a, a liquid down, right? This is the one that you may not have guessed. You can have AQ, and that means aqueous. Aqueous means water. Solution. So aqueous solution, AQ, it means water solution. It means that, you know, what if I'm reacting uh, sodium chloride, table salt, right, with something? Well, table salt is granular, you know, in your hands and it's a solid. Well, what if I want to mix that salt in a teeny tiny bit of water and make a solution, right? So I mix it up in a solution and then I pour something in there to react it. Well, the sodium chloride is still in the water. It isn't gone anywhere. It just dissociates and it goes and it fits between the water molecules. That's what dissolving is. But it's still there and it's still readily available to react, right? So if I pour something in that sodium chloride solution, then, you know, then it, it can still react in there even though it's tied up inside of the water like that. So if you have a solution of something, when something is dissolved in water, you put AQ in parentheses to tell me. If I put AQ here, it would mean, hey, there's some carbon dissolved in, in water. And when you think about it, water, this is kind of an aside, but water is so incredibly important to life on Earth, right? Because the oceans, we have two-thirds of our entire planet is salt water, right? And life is so incredibly diverse in the oceans, all the way from the microscopic organisms, all the way up to the fish and the whales and the dolphins and everything else. That's because water serves as an incredible canvas to, uh, upon which chemistry can, can, can do its thing, so to speak. So it's important when we go out and look on li for life in other planets, hopefully, to have water on that, on that guy because it turns out that water as a medium for chemistry is so important. And that's why we have a special label for it because a lot of these reactions that we're going to deal with later on are going to be in a water solution. All right, so we've talked about what is a chemical reaction. We've talked about how do we write a chemical reaction. We've talked about the coefficients that are in front. We've talked about what balanced chemical reaction means. And we've talked about these little guys in parentheses that we can use to keep track of the uh, state of everything. Now I want to write down for you an unbalanced reaction. Balanced reaction. Because I want you to see what an unbalanced reaction looks like so that we can chart our course for the rest of this lesson. What if we had hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas yields water. And you could put, you know, liquid if you want. It turns out that this is rocket fuel. This is what a lot of rockets use. They take hydrogen and they burn it with oxygen. And when you do that, you generate a lot of heat that pushes that water out the back end of the rocket, shoots your rocket up in the sky. But you end up making water. Now, it might come out as superheated steam or whatever, but for the purpose of this, let's just say gaseous hydrogen plus gaseous oxygen yields liquid water, let's say. Now, why do we have the twos here? That goes back to our diatomic molecules. Oxygen just doesn't exist as O by itself. It just doesn't, and neither does hydrogen. You cannot buy a tank of hydrogen that's just going to be hydrogen atoms in there. They're going to be bonded in these molecules. You know, uh, nitrogen is the same way, hydrogen is the same way, oxygen is the same way, and there are a few others. We've talked about those diatomic molecules before. But if you look at this reaction, the first thing you need to do is see if it's balanced. Now, there's an implied one out here, there's an implied one out here, and there's an implied one out here. So let's go through it. Start left to right. Hydrogen. I have two atoms of hydrogen. I have this one out here, so one times two is two. Two atoms of hydrogen. I go over here, and I see, okay, there's an implied one. There's two atoms of hydrogen. Hydrogen is balanced. I'm, I'm good so far. I go to oxygen and I say, okay, there's two atoms of oxygen because there's an implied one. There's two atoms of oxygen. I go over here and I see a one and a one. I only see one atom of oxygen. So hydrogen was balanced, but oxygen is not balanced. 
So as this equation, as this chemical reaction is written on the board, it is basically not possible. It cannot happen the way I have written it. I mean, yeah, the hydrogen can combine with the oxygen to give you the water, but the ratios are all wrong. It cannot happen because this oxygen, I have two atoms on the left and I only have one atom on the right. That violates nature. It just can't happen. You cannot have a reaction where you end up with less oxygen than you start with. It will not happen. So what you have to do is balance this reaction. What basically this is telling you is that this stuff doesn't combine in these ratios. It doesn't combine in a one mole of this plus one mole of this gives me one mole of this. It just doesn't. So what you have to do is balance it. And the way you balance it is you just go left to right and you start, you know, you start playing around with these coefficients so that everything balances. And I'll tell you right now, it just comes with practice. We're going to do a ton of problems here to give you practice. But ultimately, you're going to need to work enough of them yourself to get comfortable with it. And I can teach you, but you have to work them. Work every one of these, work more in your book until you're comfortable with balancing reactions. The process is pretty simple. Two atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of hydrogen. So I'm good, I don't have to mess with hydrogen. Now I look over here, I have two atoms of oxygen, but only one atom of oxygen here. So the way I'm gonna to try to fix that or correct that is I'm going to put a two in front. I am free to choose coefficients anywhere I want as long as I balance the reaction. So now I look and I say two atoms of oxygen, here I have two times one, because you're basically multiplying, you can almost think of parentheses being here, two times one gives me two. So I have balanced the oxygen. But look what I've done, friends. I've balanced the oxygen, but I've kind of messed up the hydrogen, because now I have two times two is four atoms of hydrogen, and I go over here and I only have two atoms of hydrogen. But that's okay, because I can fix that by just putting a two here. So I've put coefficients everywhere where I think will balance this reaction, let's double check four atoms of hydrogen. Two times two is four. Go over here. Two times two is four. Four hydrogens. Over here. Two atoms of oxygen. Over here. Two atoms of oxygen. Two times one is two. So I have the same number of hydrogens on the left and the right. I have the same number of oxygens on the left and the right. The good news about balancing reactions uh, is that you will always, always know if you've done it right. You always know. There's no guesswork because once you put your coefficients down, you'll be able to look back and forth, back and forth, and if they're all equal, you've done it right. So what you're trying to do is find these coefficients so the lowest ratio here is going to give it to be balanced. So what this means in this reaction as written, this is how nature really works. It means that it takes two moles of hydrogen gas reacting with one mole of oxygen gas to give me two moles of water, basically. And the reason that we had to adjust these coefficients was because you can only get hydrogen out of a bottle in terms of H2. You can only get oxygen out of the bottle in terms of H2, but yet you're forming a compound with different numbers of hydrogen and oxygen. So you have to adjust the ratios of how it's all gonna work out so that you can have the same number of atoms on the left and the right. Two moles of this plus one mole of this is equal to two moles of this. These coefficients, these twos here, and these ones, they're called the stoichiometric coefficients. We talk about it in a minute. Those stoichiometric coefficients in the next couple sections are absolutely crucial for calculating what this reaction is going to yield in terms of, you know, how many grams of this is this gonna make? Those coefficients are the key. So you have to know how to balance your reactions. All right? So I think we are basically, um, I think we are, are basically uh, done with explaining the theory of how this works. I think you know what a reaction is, you know what a balanced reaction is in theory. Now comes the point where we roll up our sleeves and we solve a bunch of these things. We, we balance a ton of reactions ourselves to get comfortable with it. So that's all we're going to do next. Let's say you have a reaction, uh, whoops, sulfur, eight, so eight atoms of sulfur bonded together like this. Let's say that's a solid, plus O2 gas, oxygen, yields sulfur dioxide. And let's say that that's a gas. So this is a reaction. And your, our claim is that it's, it's unbalanced. Let's check and see if it's unbalanced. Well, we have eight sulfurs here. We go over here, we only have one sulfur because we have ones out in front. So the sulfur immediately is unbalanced. Oxygen, however, is balanced. So we're good on the oxygen. So what we need to do is take it step by step. On the left, we have eight of these guys, so we need to alter this to give us eight. Now, when you do this in a chemistry book or on your test, you're going to be very tempted to just write numbers here 
and then you'll go back and you'll strike out numbers and you'll alter the numbers and you'll strike them out again and again until you get it to work. But when I teach this, I am going to write the reaction on a separate line every time I make a change to it because it's going to help you follow it. So here we have S8. I'm going to drop the solid liquid gas. O2 yields SO2. And what I want to do to balance the sulfur is to put a, a uh, 8 here. The reason I'm putting an 8 here is to make 8 sulfurs to balance this 8 sulfurs. So now I go through again and see if I've screwed anything up. 8 sulfurs, 8 sulfurs. 2 oxygens, now I have 8 times 2, I have 16 oxygens. I think, boy, I've really messed something up here. Let me rewrite everything again. S8 plus O2 yields 8SO2. Okay, so I have 16 oxygens, 8 times 2. To fix that, to correct that, I'm going to put an 8 here. And now let me check and see if I've balanced everything. 8 sulfurs, 8 sulfurs, 16 oxygens, 16 oxygens. I have balanced everything. And I go back and look, I'm at the lowest ratio possible. One mole of this stuff to 8 moles of this stuff yields 8 moles of this stuff here. And this is the finished balanced reaction. This is what nature really does. If you mix this stuff together, it's going to combine in these ratios and give you that as a result. So up till now, you know how to do it. It's much like, um, it's much like adding fractions. I mean, once you know how to do it, you can do any kind of problem you want, but it's still gonna take you some effort if you're adding 64 119 plus three halves. I mean, even though you know how to get that common denominator, even though you know how to add them, and even though you know how to simplify them, um, it's still need to practice. So you know how to balance these things. So don't, don't just flip past this in your book and say, okay, I understand that. You've got to practice it because I guarantee it will get a little bit more challenging. So let's go and do another one. Let's say we have uh, the following. Let's say we have silicon chlorine 4, SiCl4 plus H2O yields SiO2 plus HCl. And this is a good example for me to bring back. When you write it down yourself as a student, you're going to be tempted to just put a coefficient here and then come back and put a coefficient there. Okay, I'm balanced. But I'm writing it out line by line, showing you where I'm putting the coefficient so that you can more easily see what I'm doing and so that you can more easily follow it. I actually highly recommend that you do this yourself, at least in the beginning, because it'll help you. Ultimately, if you don't do that, you're going to get to more and more complicated reactions and you're going to put a coefficient down and then you're going to have to go back and change it, strike it out and change it. And then after you change three or four coefficients, you're not going to remember like why you changed them. So you're going to go in circles. You're going to trust me a little bit here. If you write them out, it will take a little more paper, but it will save you time. So definitely do it. All right, so we go through here and we say, okay, we have one silicon, one silicon. I'm good on that. Four chlorines. Only one chlorine, not so good on that. Two hydrogens, one hydrogen, definitely not good on that. One oxygen, two oxygens, definitely not good on that. So I'm thinking um, I've definitely got some work cut out for myself here. So write the reaction over again. Resist the urge to work on the initial one you write down. SiCl4 plus H2O yields SiO2 plus HCl. So I look at it again, and basically at this point it just comes down to experience. Uh, I'm looking at the silicon, I see it's balanced. I'm looking at the chlorine, four, and here's one. So I'm gonna fix that by putting a four here. Because now I have four chlorines and four chlorines. I'm good on that. So I go, I iterate back through and I just keep checking. Silicon is okay, silicon's okay. Chlorine's okay, chlorine's okay. Hydrogen is two over here, four over here, not okay. So I need to keep going. SiCl4 plus H2O yields SiO2 plus 4HCl. And so I go and I say, well, these are okay. Two hydrogens, four hydrogens. Now, you can't just change this number back to two because if you change it back to two, you're going to screw the chlorine up that you already, you already fixed. So when you've already got this satisfied, then go back and try to alter something else. You've got four hydrogens. I can easily fix that by putting a two here. So then I go back through it and check it again. Silicon's good, silicon's good. Chlorine's good, chlorine's good. Hydrogen, I have four of those now. I have four of those now. Oxygen, I have two of those now. I have two of those now. This is the final balanced reaction. 
So what you have to do is go line by line, step by step, and make sure that you, you know, don't take anything for granted because if you start changing these coefficients and don't check everything every single time, you will make a mistake. Start at the beginning and check everything on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And what this means is that one mole of this silicon chloride reacts with two moles of water to yield one mole of this silicon dioxide and four moles of this HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. We haven't um, talked about acids yet, but HCl you'll see a lot. It's called hydrochloric acid. It's a very powerful acid actually that can hurt you if it's concentrated enough. Okay, so much like we said before, we're going to keep on plugging along until we get to the point where we're comfortable with this. We're just gonna do a lot of examples. Let's say you have PCl3 plus H2O yields H3PO3 plus HCl. Again, hydrochloric acid. So we go left to right, uh, just seeing what we have. One phosphorus, one phosphorus. That's good. Three chlorines. Here I only have one chlorine, so I'm not good there. Hydrogen's two, hydrogen's three, oxygen's one, oxygen's three. So everything's all messed up except for the uh, phosphorus, but take it one step at a time. So PCl3 plus H2O yields H3PO3 plus HCl. So the phosphorus was good. The chlorine is the first thing that's not so good. So it's three chlorines. I'm gonna fix that by putting a three over here. That makes three chlorines. So I have to iterate back through, start at the beginning. Phosphorus is good, phosphorus is good. Three chlorines, three chlorines. Two hydrogens, I have three hydrogens. That's not so good. Oxygen, oxygen, okay? So there's a lot of different ways you can go, but the easiest way to go, let me rewrite everything again. PCl3 plus H2O yields h 3 po 3 plus 3 hcl if i come back over here and try to balance this oxygen here i have three oxygens here and only one here so if i put a three here let me go iterate back through and see if that corrects everything for me one phosphorus one phosphorus three chlorines three chlorines six hydrogens and over here i have three hydrogens i have three more hydrogens here so that makes six hydrogens to my six over here, I'm balanced on that now. And as a bonus, three oxygens balances my three oxygens. I've checked everything on the left, everything on the right, and it all checks out. So this is the final balanced reaction. What this means is one mole of this stuff, this potassium, I mean this uh, phosphorus chloride, reacts with three moles of water, giving you one mole of this plus three moles of your hydrochloric acid. All right, and it, there's not really like only one way to do this. You might choose to balance things in a different order. Uh, maybe you would choose to balance the oxygen first. I chose to balance the chlorine first. That's okay, but ultimately, you should always arrive, no matter what direction you go, you should always arrive at the same coefficients. It's just like solving an equation in algebra. I mean, you could subtract first, you could add first. Sometimes you can multiply first, sometimes you can divide first. But ultimately, you should always get x equals two if that's the answer. So you should always get the same reaction even if you're, tr you're, you're kind of plugging along at a different, uh, a different way of doing business than I'm actually writing it on the board. All right, what if we have calcium oxide plus phosphorus oxide yields Ca3PO42? Now here's the first one where we have a polyatomic ion. We have calcium oxide, phosphorus oxide, and we have this guy here. Here's a polyatomic ion, PO4, but we have two of them. That's why we have the parentheses there. But it, it all behaves exactly the same way. First, we check the calcium. Calcium is one of these guys, three calciums. Well, that's immediately busted. One oxygen, plus we have 10 oxygens here, so we actually have 11 oxygens. Over here, we have four oxygens here, but we have two of these ions. So it's really four times two is eight. So we have eight on the right-hand side, that's busted. The phosphorus is four. The phosphorus here is one times two is two. So everything's busted, actually. Nothing is balanced at all in this reaction. So let's write it down. We have CaO plus P4O10 
yields. Ca three P O four two. So let's balance the calcium first. We're going to put a three there because that's going to make three calciums for three calciums. Okay. Let's see where that brings us. Now, if we check oxygen, we have three oxygens plus 10 more oxygens means we have 13 oxygens on the left hand side. On the right, we have two times four is only eight oxygens. That is not going to be very pretty to fix. But if we go over here, we'll see we have four phosphorus guys and two phosphorus guys over here. So let me take a tactic of trying to fix the phosphorus next. Let's put a two here. And actually, I broke my own rule. I want to rewrite it again because it just makes things clearer. So we have 3CaO plus P4O10 yields Ca3PO42. Okay, so let's take the tactic, instead of trying to mess with the oxygens, take the tactic of the phosphorus. We have four of those, so here we have eight, and so on the left-hand side we have four, and on the right-hand side, I'm sorry, we don't have eight, we have two phosphorus, so we're going to put a two here, and that should correct the phosphorus. Let's go back through and, and iterate again, so we've made a change, let's go back through. Now we have three calciums, but see, since we've added this two, we've kind of hosed it up a little bit. Now we have six calciums on the right, so that's not balanced anymore. But the phosphorus is balanced because we now we have two phosphorus from here. One times two is two times two. That means there's four phosphorus here and there's four phosphorus here, right? So that's balanced. But then we look at our oxygen and we say, okay, we have 10 oxygens here plus we have 13 oxygens because of this stuff over here, 13. How many oxygens do we have here? Four times two is eight oxygens. Eight times two is 16. So it's not balanced on either side. So you, you might look at this and you might say, I'm spiraling out of control. I'm choosing numbers. Nothing seems to be balancing. What is going on here? And this is when you start to on a test stress out and give up, all right? But realize that you just gotta keep playing with it. I mean, that's the only thing I can say. It takes practice. You just gotta keep messing around with these numbers and eventually you'll hit the combination. But don't start randomly throwing numbers and don't just pick numbers out of thin air. I mean, you've gotta think methodically. You chose this to balance the calcium. Then you had to choose this to balance the phosphorus. But when you did that, you screwed up the calcium. So let's go back, instead of trying to mess with the oxygen, let's mess with the calcium again. CaO plus P4O10 yields 2Ca3PO42. Now we have six calciums on the right, so let's change this coefficient from three Let's change it to uh, six. And let's go back through again and see if we fixed it. Six calciums, six calciums. Okay, let's skip the oxygen for a minute. Four phosphorus, right? And over here, I have two phosphorus comes from here, but multiply the whole thing by two. Two times the two from here gives me four. So four phosphorus, four phosphorus, that's good. Now let's check the oxygen. Six oxygens plus 10 oxygens means 16 oxygen. Here, four times two is eight oxygens times the two coefficient out front gives me 16. So eight times two is 16. So I have 16 oxygens on the left and 16 oxygens on the right. And see, we were so close to giving up, but we actually just had to keep playing with it to get the answer. And this is why I'm saying, if you just write this on your test and start putting coefficients here and then erasing coefficients, you're gonna get confused. Because if you were to put a three here, and then put a two here, and then erase this and put a six here. I'm not saying that you couldn't get to the answer, but doing it this way really lets you zero in on what you were doing. This tells me I was balancing the calcium. This tells me I was balancing, I'm sorry, this tells me I was balancing, yeah, the calcium. This tells me I was balancing this phosphorus to give me this. And then when I go back and look at my latest guy, I'm like, okay, well, let me go back and try to balance that calcium again that I kind of messed up just a second ago. When I do that, then I check everything and look at that, the oxygen's taken care of as well. There's really not much more to say other than that. You gotta keep playing with it a little bit, folks. You can't, you can't just try two times and then give up. Do your best to lay it out like this and uh, I think it'll be just fine to get the answers. Okay, our next one, let's say we have 10, which is SN, plus sodium hydroxide, NaOH, We'll talk about hydroxides a little bit later. Yields Na2SN oxide plus H2. Okay, sodium 10 oxide like that. So we want to balance this guy and we look at it and we say, well, 
10 is 110 over here and 110 over there, so I'm good. One sodium, two sodium, that's not good. Oxygen and hydrogen are both messed up as well. So let's go and rewrite it and try to figure out what coefficient we can add. So 10 plus sodium hydroxide yields Na2SNO2 plus H2. Now we look at the sodium, that's the first thing I come across, one and two. So I'm gonna fix that by putting a two here. Now let's check again, 110, 110. Two sodiums, two sodiums. Two oxygens, because I have one here, but I've got two out in front, two oxygens, two oxygens. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens. It turns out that that one simple coefficient changes the whole thing. That means one mole of this 10 will react with two moles of sodium hydroxide, yielding one mole of this and one mole of hydrogen gas. Okay, so what we've done in this section so far is we've introduced the idea of a reaction, a notation, how do you write it down, we've re represented how to write the coefficients, we've told you what a balanced reaction is versus an unbalanced reaction, and we've given several problems to really show how to do that. So these are problems that, yeah, in the beginning they're a little challenging, but ultimately they're a little bit easier just because there's not too many reactants and too many products. Okay, what we're going to do now is close this section down, let you digest what we've done here, let you work all of these. Please do sit down and work all of these reactions out. Make sure you know how to balance them yourself, work some more. And then in the next section, we're going to continue balancing reactions. It's the same principle, nothing is going to be new. But we are going to just have slightly more complicated reactions with more polyatomic ions, more subscripts, everything's going to be more to give you a little bit of practice with that. So make sure you understand these, then go on and watch the next section and roll up your sleeves for some more practice with balancing chemical reactions.